It is important to plan in advance, both at the short terminal and offshore to aid effective cargo securing. The objective of pre-planning is the safe and practical restraint of cargo carried on the deck of offshore support vessels so that personnel, ship and cargo may be reasonably protected at all stages of carriage, and during cargo operations offshore. The plan provides at a glance the distribution of the cargo and shows possible access to it in the event of fire or the cargo shifting. Its most common function is to limit overcarriage and the possibility of short delivery at the port of discharge. It also allows cargo operations, stevedores, rigging equipment, lifting gear and so on to be organized without costly delays to the ship. A ship's cargo plan shows the distribution as well as the disposition of all parcels of cargo aboard the vessel. A fair copy is made before departure from the final port of loading and forwarded to agents at ports of discharge to allow the booking and reservation of labor, as appropriate. All cargo should be stowed having due regard to the order of discharge. When planning the position of cargo and the order of loading and unloading, the effects that these operations will have upon access and the safety of personnel should be considered. The gross mass of the cargo should be taken into account and any special properties detailed on board or in the shipping documents should be recorded and used in planning. Where more than one port is involved for loading or unloading, Cargo should be loaded in layers rather than in tiers, so as to avoid the development of high vertical walls of cargo. Care should be taken not to overstow lighter cargoes with heavier cargoes which may lead to a collapse of the stow. Weighty packages such as cases of machinery, railway bar or plate iron, blocks of stones, or billets, ingots or pigs of metal, etc., should always be stowed on the tank top or floor with lighter cargo on top. As a general rule, Fragile and light packages should be stowed in tween deck spaces. The need to walk across or climb onto deck cargo, where this may involve an approach to an unprotected edge with risk of falling, should be minimized and care should be taken to avoid large gaps next to cargo where it is stacked against corrugated bulkheads. The cargo plan should include relevant details of cargoes, that is total quantity, description of package, bales, pallets etc tonnage, port of discharge, identification marks and special features if and when separated. The port of discharge is normally highlighted in one specific color, reducing the likelihood of a parcel of cargo being overcarried to the next port. Cargoes which may have an optional port of discharge are often double colored to the requirements of both ports. Deck cargo should be stowed in accordance with the statutory regulations and kept clear of hatch combings to allow safe access. Access to safety equipment, firefighting equipment, particularly fire hydrants. Sounding pipes should also be kept free, and so as to leave safe clearance behind the rungs of hold ladders and to allow safe access as may be necessary at sea. Any obstructions in the access way, such as lashings or securing points should be painted white to make them more easily visible. The nature of the packages sometimes calls for them to be kept in a certain position, that is coils and rings on the flat, etc. Avoid stowing bale and light goods on top of cargo which has life and spring, or against bulkhead stiffeners, deck beams, brackets, frames, stanchions or other projections, using plenty of dunnage to protect them from contacting such projections and rough surfaces. Each tier should be kept as level as possible. With packages of uniform size it should be perfectly level. Packages should not be stowed in such a manner or position that they tilt either way, as will occur at the turn of the bilge or with the rise and floor in the forepart of the forward hold, etc. Properly placed dunnage or bridging will ensure that this does not occur. Any broken storage caused by the presence of pillars, stanchions, brackets, web frames, etc for the filling of which certain packages are not available, or space which is unsuitable to receive a package of cargo, should be packed firmly with suitable dunnage or air bags, in order to prevent movement of cargo in a seaway and to afford a stable and level platform for the next tier. The loss of valuable cargo space, where the nature of the cargo justifies economy, is best avoided by compactness of storage. Selecting packages which, by the nature and value of their contents and their construction, are suitable for filling broken storage. Reels of barbed wire, 
bales of bind twine, coils of small wire, for example, are very useful for this purpose. Stowing casks and drums upright rather than on their sides. Blocking in spaces left between large cases with smaller packages. Care should be taken that these packages cannot become crushed.